as you know, on Saturday, December 27th, the latest uh, U.S.-Israeli attack on uh, hopeless Palestinians was launched. It had been meticulously prepared. Uh, we know from the Israeli press that both aspects of the campaign had long been carefully prepared, both the military aspect and the propaganda aspect, uh, learning from the lessons of the 2006 invasion of Lebanon, uh, which it was argued was not planned well from a military point of view and was not advertised properly. So this time, both of those aspects were under control uh, with extensive programs, and that means we can be reasonably confident that uh, anything that's happening or that is said uh, is uh, uh, purposeful. It's planned that way. Maybe not everything, but most of it. Uh, one thing that was planned carefully was the uh, time of the launching of the war. It was carefully chosen. Uh, it was shortly before noon on Saturday when children are returning from school and uh, crowds are milling around in the streets of uh, densely populated Gaza City. Uh, and it took only a few minutes to kill uh, well over 200 people and uh, wound around 700, uh, which is an auspicious uh, opening to the mass slaughter of defenseless civilians uh, trapped in a tiny cage with nowhere to flee. Uh, that was Saturday, December 27th. Uh, last Saturday, uh, two weeks later, uh, Israel uh, barred uh, humanitarian shipments to Gaza Strip uh, because we have to, after all, honor the holy days. Uh, none of this is at all surprising. It's familiar. Uh, just to mention one parallel, which is relevant. I'll come to it later. Uh, in June 1982, uh, when Israel launched its uh, U.S.-backed invasion of Lebanon, uh, the first target attacked was uh, a Sabran Shatila refugee camps, later to become famous because of a major massacre. Uh, the bombing uh, hit the hospital, uh, the Gaza hospital, uh, killed more than 200 people. Uh, that was the opening day of the invasion, which uh, killed maybe 15 to 20,000 people, uh, destroyed much of southern Lebanon, uh, large parts of Beirut. Uh, it was able to proceed as usual because of U.S. support, uh, U.S. authorization, U.S. arms, diplomatic support, uh, which included uh, vetoing a series of Security Council resolutions uh, calling for an end to the carnage. Uh, the aggression was undertaken, also as usual, uh, and as conceded, in fact, uh, to defend Israel, namely from the threat of a peaceful political settlement. That's contrary to much uh, routine deceit in the United States, particularly, uh, but it's all so well documented, it's hardly necessary to talk about it. Uh, all of this is normal. And it's not concealed by high Israeli officials. Uh, just to give one example, uh, 30 years ago, the chief of staff of the army, uh, Mordechai Gur, uh, pointed out that, quote him, since 1948, we have been fighting against a population that lives in villages and cities. Uh, Israel's major uh, military analyst, uh, Zev Schiff, summarized his remarks. He said, the Israeli army has always struck civilian populations, purposely and consciously. The army, Gur said, has never distinguished civilian from military targets, but has purposely attacked civilian targets. And the reasons were explained right at the same time by uh, the uh, distinguished uh, statesman, uh, Abba Eben, considered a dove. Uh, he said, there was a rational prospect ultimately fulfilled that affected populations would exert pressure for the cessation of hostilities uh, satisfying Israel's goals. Uh, 
uh, Eben happened to be commenting on a speech by uh, Menachem Begin, uh, which presented a picture, Eben said, of an Israel wantonly inflicting every possible measure of death and anguish on civilian populations in a mood reminiscent of regimes which neither Mr. Begin nor I would dare to mention by name. Uh, Eben did not contest the facts. He criticized Begin for speaking about them so frankly, which could be harmful to the Israeli image. Uh, his own views, which I just quoted, uh, could also be attributed to countries that we dare not mention by name. Uh, well, as the latest uh, U.S.-Israeli assault on Gaza began, uh, a small boat, the, the Dignity, was uh, traveling from Cyprus to Lebanon. Uh, there were doctors and human rights activists aboard, and they intended to uh, violate Israel's uh, criminal blockade and to bring supplies to the trapped population. The boat was intercepted far out at sea in international waters. Uh, the Israeli Navy uh, rammed it without warning, severely damaged the boat. It managed to limp to a uh, Lebanese harbor. Israel provided the routine lies, uh, terrorists, etc., and claimed that the boat wasn't rammed. But unfortunately for the propaganda system, uh, there were uh, uh, respected journalists on board, including CNN correspondent uh, uh, Carl Penhall, uh, who reported, uh, there were other Al Jazeera reporters, but Penhall is hard to dismiss, though he was dismissed. Uh, also aboard was uh, Cynthia McKinney, the uh, a former representative, uh, a candidate, a presidential candidate for the Green Party. Uh, she and other uh, uh, passengers verified uh, Carl Penhall's account, which I've just stated. Uh, this is all a, quite a serious crime. Uh, for example, a ramp, ramming and almost sinking a boat in international waters is a much more serious crime than piracy off the co coasts of Somalia, for example. Uh, it received very little notice, you know, a few words here and there, uh, it's, uh, which reflects a tacit, tacit uh, acceptance of the principle that Israel is authorized to carry out uh, crimes on the high seas uh, in order to uh, defend itself against uh, any interference with its uh, illegal military occupation by trying to provide some succor to the victims. Uh, also tacitly accepted is that uh, the Gaza Strip is, an, is occupied territory. That is, Israel has a right to uh, uh, impose a siege on it. Well, that lack of attention, again, makes good sense. It's all very familiar. Uh, for decades, Israel has been uh, hijacking uh, ships uh, in international waters between Cyprus and Lebanon, uh, killing passengers, uh, kidnapping them. Uh, many of them brought to Israel, uh, some held as hostages for a long time, imprisoned, uh, sometimes in uh, secret uh, prison torture chambers, which have been exposed in Israel and Europe, but not reported here. Uh, and it's known, you occasionally see a mention of it in U.S. commentary, but uh, never considered very serious. Uh, so there's no particular reason why this new crime should be greeted with anything more than a yawn. Uh, these uh, regular practices are quite significant. They underscore the utter hypocrisy of the standard claim that Israel had the right to invade Lebanon uh, once again in 2006, fifth invasion, uh, because soldiers were captured at the border. Uh, actually, as I say, this has been Israeli practice over many years has been far more extreme. Uh, killing, intercepting ships, killing people there, capturing them as hostages, all of that is far more extreme crime than capturing uh, soldiers at a, at, at a border post. Uh, you can think what you do about that, but it doesn't rank anywhere near it. So if that justifies the invasion, which uh, again, once again, devastated southern Lebanon and parts of Beirut, if principles operated, 
you can draw your own conclusions, but fortunately they don't operate, fortunately for the U.S. and its clients.